Hey, it's Dan. Welcome back. You're watching I Allegedly. And i uh, got a good one for you today because you will never own a home. That's what people are saying. So please, don't forget to hit the like button. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And uh, today we have a sponsor, Dr. Amy, and I will talk about her in a little bit. But uh, first things first, Redfin. Redfin is a real estate site. Kind of like Zillow, kind of like Realtor, but it's Redfin. And uh, they did a survey of 3,000 people. And they asked them if they thought they would own a home anytime soon. 40% of the people surveyed, 40, okay? And this is up from 27% a year ago, said that they will never be able to own a home. Wow. Now, they cite... A few problems and the number one problem is the ability to save for a down payment they can't get ahead cannot put aside any money to put down as a down payment well gosh we will fix that we will make it so that there's a no down payment program for people like you so that you can be in debt to the moon okay and then the next thing is they state that prices are way too high so you can't do that because we cannot afford real estate at the prices that they're at right now. So we need to have affordable housing, guys, and we need to lower the price of this. And the problem that you have is that right now, interest rates on mortgages are well above 7%, and that's if you have decent credit. And I said decent, didn't say stellar, didn't say fantastic, I just said decent credit. Now, you know, I was talking to a banker who told me that they had a deal on a HELOC loan, which is your second trustee that you can write a check for against the equity in your home. And that was set at 6.99%. And that was for a set period of time. And if you used it, if you didn't use it, it's going to go to the prevailing rate of prime plus God knows what added on to it. But the average person is sitting there saying that they cannot afford real estate right now. It's a real problem, guys. This is a real, real problem because it's going in the wrong direction. Now, I had a meeting today with a foreclosure company, again, who is just getting ready. It's like preparing a car to go down the drag strip. Greg Manorino ripping down the quarter mile in his rocket car, and uh, it's that. They're getting the motor ready, they're getting everything done, you know, and just ready because they're about to pounce, okay? And it's getting busier and busier and busier. Now, here's the thing. Everybody's talking about how they're getting more files right now and more files. Now, here's the thing. Real estate is sitting on the shelf longer, okay? It is bread that is going bad because it's sitting there longer, okay? And you can sit there and say, that's just a selective market and that's just what people want to do. No, people want to sell their house in five minutes like they did, you know, a year ago. It's not the case right now. The other thing is that you're seeing areas, and we're going to use Las Vegas as a perfect example, of where foreclosures are escalating out of control. And if you look at the number of listings and properties that are below, there's a great story below that's got all the, the different dates and different times and what cities have the most amount of listings, what cities are sitting there longer. And again, it's like stale bread. Who's got the biggest problem right now? That's... The issue right now when it comes to real estate, let's put aside the real estate commission shenanigans right now because there's, you know, the real estate agents sit there and say nothing's going to change. Oh, yeah. Um, after I film this video, I have an appointment with another attorney today. And the attorney says, wow, Dan, you know what I've had a lot of over the course of the last three weeks is uh, people that want me to represent them without a real estate agent. They want me to handle the transaction want me to look at the offer, want me to look at the contract, and they don't want to pay the buyer's commission. They want to be able to negotiate that out of the contract. Huh. Now, I get realtors that say, no, no, if they said that there's going to be a 6% commission and the buyer's agent doesn't take it, it's just going to go to the selling agent. In, in what planet do you guys live on? Okay. Everything is negotiable. Remember that? Everything's a deal right now. But, but again, according to you real estate agents, we're just supposed to pay these fees and be happy with it. Not so fast. So the other thing is, you know, 
I get a kick out of certain things that we talk about, and then they just keep coming truer and truer and truer. Jamie Dimon, when you listen to his quotes, it's like Otis the Drunk from you know, Mayberry RFD, where this guy one day says one thing, and then another day says another thing. But again, it's, it's laughable because it's Jamie Dimon, okay? It runs the world's largest bank, and he's supposed to be the guy, okay? Man of the people, okay? Which he's not. He's a $36.5 million fat cat who doesn't like people like you and I, okay? Let's face it, okay? Jamie, you know, last week was concerned about the economy. Then he goes to the New York Economic Club, which, again, you and I are, a, that's a club that you and I are not invited to. Jamie Dimon goes to this club and sits down and says, listen, the consumer is resilient. Even if we enter a recession, which we're far beyond recession right now, guys, we are beyond that, okay? People are going to do just fine. People are going to be resilient. They're going to fight through this. But we need a practitioner when it comes to politics. Huh? Mark my words, this guy's going to run for president someday. Probably sooner than, you know, than later. But again, man of the people, Jamie Dimon. Okay, don't forget that. Man of the people. Okay? But we need practitioners. We need to have cabinets that have both sides of the aisle inside the cabinet. We need to have people working together as a team when it comes to the economy. That's what we need. Okay. Does he do that? Seriously. You think he does that? You think he does things by committee over there at JP Morgan? I'm gonna say no. Okay? So, but man of the people, that's what we need. We need a committee, practitioners, remember that. Read the article below, let me know what you think about this. But again, the only thing I agree with this little soiree right now is the fact that the average person is starting to wake up to the fact that they can't afford this. And I am telling you, if you know someone that's trying to buy a house right now, talk them out of it right now, seriously. Do what you can do to talk them out of it right now because it's only going to go down in value, okay? It's going to go down in value. They're going to put down a down payment, and then the house is going to be worth less in the future. Now, you can sit there and say, this guy's an idiot. He doesn't know anything about what he's talking about. Okay, okay. Just answer a couple questions. Why are the banks getting ready to take these houses back at a record clip? Why is that? Let me know. Let's talk about our sponsor, Dr. Amy Lee. You know, think about this. In a world where the medical advances are getting better and better, we have a problem with foods that we're being told are healthy for us when in fact they're actually bad for us. Dr. Amy Lee is a board certified physician and nutritionalist who's put together a list of three foods that are sold as health foods that we need to stay away from. In fact, these foods are even banned in other countries. Okay? If you go to threeharmfulfoods.com forward slash Dan, you can see what Dr. Amy Lee has put together. Take a look at it today and, uh, you know, think about this. There are foods that we eat that actually contribute to our joint pain, contribute to our, our bad gut, and contribute to bloating. You can do something about that. Take a look at Dr. Amy Lee today. Go to threeharmfulfoods.com forward slash Dan. The number three harmfulfoods.com forward slash Dan. Check it out today. Here is something that is absolutely wild. The Federal Trade Commission yesterday just got rid of non-compete agreements and said that they are illegal, okay? I want you to think about this. When you hire an executive, let's forget anybody below that. The one thing that you wanna do is you wanna make it so that you don't have them stealing your trade secrets. You don't have them you know, taking their customer list and leaving, you know, to go and start up another company and just to go out and, uh, um, you know, take what was from the previous company, okay? Now, a lot of people write me and say, the idea of a non-compete, Dan, is to stranglehold people so that they can't make a living. Okay, you, you can say that, okay? I know a lot of people that have written me lately and said, I had to sign a non-compete just to get my severance package from the company and had no choice because I had no ability to eat. Okay, that's wrong.
But what do you guys think about this? You cannot, you know, compete and go to another company and take what's ours. Now, here's the thing. This got pushed to certain extremes. There was a case involving Jimmy John's, the sandwich company, and non-compete about how they cut their meat, how they slice their meat, the order that the meat was sliced, and had people sign non-competes for that and actually litigated that. Okay, now, again, guys, have you ever thought about the order in which the meat to uh, vegetables to cheese ratio was divided up in your salad? If it would save my life, I couldn't tell you how that was done in my favorite sandwich. Seriously, okay? So this I don't agree with at all. I think that's ridiculous. And the problem with it is they did it with really low-end uh, workers, janitors even. Hey, you can't compete. Well, I, I, I scrub the floors, guys. No, 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 no. We know what you do. We know what you know, okay? <laughs> do you know, it get, that gets ridiculous, and I understand that. But the idea with this is that you're going to, this, the idea with this was to make it so there would be less litigation. There will be so much more litigation as a result of this. Because the one thing right now, as a friend of mine takes over another foreclosure company, is the non-compete aspect of this. And what you guys can do, what you can't do, who you can market to, who you can't market to. And they're trying to agree to this. Now, in 120 days from yesterday, they're going to be able to say, ah, eh, it's no big deal, okay? So will people sign these agreements knowing that they're not gonna be able to be enforced or are they just gonna do it and steal everything, okay? Let me know, let me know. But again, not everybody is trustworthy, not everybody is honest. There are a tremendous amount of thieves and liars in this world. And in business, people take things and do things that they're not supposed to do over and over and over again. Okay, the idea with it is to deal with trustworthy people in your business that you don't have to worry about. That's that's a perfect world. Okay, but we all can't deal with that. Do you know what I mean? So let me know what you think about this. Is this crazy? Read the article below because I, I found it fascinating. Okay, because this is exactly what these people are dealing with. And we're arguing these points back and forth. They can do X, Y and Z, but then it's moot. You understand? Because they can do whatever they want. Sure, I'll sign. Get a pen? Let me have Dan's pen. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah, I will never do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what, kind of my Mickey Mouse voice. Anyways, okay? Let me know what you think about this because it's crazy, guys. It's the, the beginning of the end of this stuff when, you know, the idea is to make it so that there's less litigation. And, in fact, things like this will make more litigation. Correct me if I'm wrong. And have you guys ever had to sign these forms? And did you ever feel like, oh my gosh, I couldn't do it? Now, I had one at one of my companies and it was beautiful, but I had a liquidated damages claim and an attorney's fees uh, clause in there that if certain things were stolen or gone, these people would have to pay me $25,000 per incident. And people, oh, it's ridiculous, man. Oh my gosh. You know what they did? They didn't steal. They didn't do anything bad. They left and went on their way. And one guy, hey, do you mind if I work at X, Y, and Z? No. Okay. Good luck to you. You know what I mean? It made people have conversations about that too. Let me know what you think. The high-end retailer Perch that I talked about a few days ago that uh, just didn't deliver on all that stuff. Just filed for liquidation, Chapter 7. Please understand this, guys. All they've taken is deposits, your money, and there's no inventory. There's not going to be much to liquidate. So they're going to liquidate that. Rick wrote me about a letter he got from the University of Georgia. And he attended there in the 80s, the 80s, the 1980s. And they said, hey, Rick, listen, we wanted to let you know that we had a data breach and certain data was stolen. Guess what? They didn't purge the system. Rick's data from the 80s is at risk. They sent him the letter, guys. Uh-oh. Okay, guys, when does this stuff end? When do they start getting sued? When do you sue the University of Georgia for stuff like this? Okay, so you know what I mean? Guys, come on, too much, guys. Way, way, way too much right now. So let me know what you think about that. Now, United Health, United Health got hit with a huge uh, ransomware attack. They paid up, they paid so that uh, your data is safe, okay? 
Does that make you feel safe knowing that Rick's data from the 1980s uh, was compromised? No, of course not. Okay. And again, like my favorite thing is it's it, the day ends in Y. It must be ransomware day or cyber attack day. Yeah, it is, guys, because it's nonstop. But again, if you're part of these customers, like the AT&T thing, you know, hey, listen, we're going to give you free data monitoring. We're going to give you this, you know, $28 coupon. Who cares about stuff like that? I don't want to be the victim of identity theft again. That's what I don't want. I don't want somebody to file a tax return in my name again, okay? Guys, I'm telling you, you want this stuff to be a problem, and it will be. If you don't change your passwords, you don't do things like that, we talked about the VPN, having your data secure, things like that, you have to have that, guys. But uh, I'm telling you, go out and change your passwords. You should basically do it, they say, every, they say six to eight weeks, maybe monthly now. You have to change your passwords and don't have the same password for everything. But a lot of us are old and feeble and forget, and we have to do this. So share your thoughts on that stuff so far. But University of Georgia from the 80s, okay? Let me know, guys. What's next? Here are two things I find absolutely fascinating. Number one, uh, they say that layoffs could increase so badly that we could hit unemployment of 5% across the country. Guys, I think that our unemployment's at like 12, 14%. I think it's up there already. But you can sit there and play games and say, it's going to get worse. Oh my gosh, it's going to get worse. It's going to hit 5%. Okay, okay. You know, so many people are not counted on the unemployment uh, dole. I mean, it's just terrible. It's absolutely ridiculous. But look at the Business Insider article talking about how spiking layoffs, spiking unemployment, uh, is going to be a real problem when it comes to the economy, okay? Now, here's something that I thought was a joke when it was first uh, presented to me. Wall Street bonuses at J.P. Morgan, Goldman, and Morgan Stanley are under scrutiny by the federal government, okay? Well, think about this. The average Wall Street bonus last year was $176,500. Wow, that's a nice chunk of change to get at the end of the year. The best year was $241,421 in 2021, but I, you know, I digress. Are these bonuses illegal? Are they trying to jam things down our throats so that they make more money? Yes, yes. Car salesman wants to sell you the tent on the window, okay? Should he go to jail for that? No. Should, why buy it? You know what I mean? The extended service warranty, that's on you, kitten, if you want that. You know what I mean? So. Fascinating stuff, though, guys, because everything I talk about is either from a reference that you guys send me or a story. So check below because both those stories are downstairs in the video description. And uh, it's funny. I say things like downstairs in the video description. How do you go downstairs, Dan? I get emails like that. Well, that would be clicking on the more button on the video description. It'll bring you up all the stories. Okay. So let me know, guys. Again, Wall Street has always made a lot of money. You know, some deserve it, some don't, you know, but let me know what you think, guys, so far. I'm gonna finish this video with these last few stories. Family Dollar, they're closing 35 more stores in the state of Ohio, and uh, there was a man, Jamie Rogers, who was driving to work as a trainer for a school and got pulled over by the cops. Full felony stop, guys. Guns out. Move and we will shoot you. And he had a loaner car from Kia. Okay? Uh-oh. Oh, wait a second, guys. I didn't steal this car. Yeah, you did. Okay? So they treated him, cuffed him like a complete car thief, felon, degenerate. And now he's suing the Kia and CarMax company. Oh, okay. Well, good for him. I hope he gets a bajillion dollars for this because... The video made the local news here, but uh, absolutely terrible, absolutely terrible. And the final, final story is, you know, I like sports, I like certain things, and uh, I get a kick out of what people value in sports, whether it be a jersey, whether it be a signature, baseball cards, things like that, fascinates me. Tom Brady is getting 
some heat right now because he had an autograph signing event. Well, I'd like Tom Brady's autograph. Okay, the $3,500 a piece, how many would you like? I'm not kidding you. 3500 bucks a piece. And people were furious over this because basically the scribble that he would put on merchandise that you would slide in front of him for $3,500, you know, fans were just, you know, felt rushed, didn't get to say, hey, Tom, how's it going? Really love you. I think you're the goat. Nope. Goodbye. Slide. Go. Move. Come on. Sign. Okay. And he would just scribble on stuff with his Sharpie. Is that worth $3,500? Okay, please do not forget to hit the like button. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And uh, if you want to get a hold of me, hello at iallegedly.com. And uh, have you gone to the Tom Brady autograph signing or do you have a non-compete? Maybe Tom Brady's got non-competes. Anyways, let me know, guys. Okay, so onward and upward, guys. I will see you very soon.